In this video, we're going to be reviewing your open source projects and giving them a shout out to the community. I really enjoy looking at your projects, so thank you all for submitting them. Let's have a look at them and learn together. But before we get started, yes, of course, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below, all that usual stuff. But I want to give a big thank you and a shout out to someone in particular in our community. In my last video, I reviewed an iOS project. I don't do that. So I made some guesses and assumptions about the project, which were incorrect. And I did say comment below if I was incorrect. So I want to say a big thank you and shout out to Andre. Not only did Andre correct my mistake, but also said it in such a constructive way. And that's really important about open source. It's important to give feedback. And if people are wrong to add improvement, add value and correct them, but not in a way that it makes them feel silly or stupid. So this was brilliant. Andre, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right, said X iOS dev here. If I remember correctly, the X code proj and XC workspace are pretty important folders and should not be removed. I thought these were like dot idea folders that IntelliJ or PHP Storm create. So I thought these shouldn't be added to the project. But apparently they're quite important. And then also I was wondering why there was Ruby in an iOS project. So Andre continues to explain the 0.3% Ruby is used because of Cocoa Pods. And then also added the timestamp in the comment. And I really like that. So thank you so much for providing the feedback back to us and the communities and we all can learn and get better together. Now onto the reviewing, let's go to the bottom and start with the oldest one first. If you want your open source project review, don't forget to submit an issue to our support repo in our community organization on GitHub. And if you want to join the organization, raise an issue with the type add me to the organization and we'll send you an invite. So Chelsea, thank you so much for submitting your project. Let's go have a look. Hopefully I've pronounced your name correctly. The project hasn't been worked on for a few months and that was mentioned in the comment when it was submitted. So we'll step over that for now, but a few months is not that long. There's seven branches and five tags is what jumps out straight away. Okay, it seems there's some feature branches, some also some fixed branches, and there are five tags as well. So our releases, this is great. So the latest one is in August, which is not that long ago. So that shows that the project is considerate and thinking about production ready code. I'm really liking the readme, it jumps out with the name and then you've also got the technology stacks that are used so people can see if it's something they want to use or want to contribute to. A link to the GitHub API, so the API that you're consuming. It says run either of the commands but some people might just copy and paste and just run them. So I'd probably separate those into like a 1A or 1B and show that they're optional but that's about it, it's looking very good. You've got installation and quick start which I think is really important. It'd be really nice to see a screen screenshot of something, even if it is the command line or the actual output. It does say go to um, localhost 3000 in the browser, so I'm pretty sure there is a front end for this. It'd be great to have a screenshot in the readme. So anyone watching, if you want to get your green square on GitHub today, raise an issue on this project and they suggest that they should add a, a screenshot to the readme. We really like the description, resume builder for your GitHub profile. Let's go try it out. Enter my username. I like this page. It looks really good. Generate resume. Loaded really nicely, really slick, was fast. It looks really nice. You got seven issues, so it shows that the project is active and things are being logged, which is really nice for people who want to get involved so they can see the type of conversation that's going on. 28 closed pull requests, really nice. It shows that you're using pull requests and things are being reviewed correctly. The last build from July has failed, so it's really good that you're using CI. So it shows you using CI. Let's have a look at what CI you're using. The deployment failed. That's fine. I'm sure that's something you're looking into. You're not using GitHub Actions yet. I'd highly recommend using that. On GitHub Actions, you could use your build command just to check that the project builds successfully. That could be one of your steps on CI. You're not using a project board. That's fine. You don't have to. If you feel the issues are enough, then you don't have to use that. Project boards are quite visual. As you know, I like going to the insights section and to the community tab. You do have a license, which is great. You don't have a code of conduct and you don't have a contributing file, which I think would be very useful. And then the issue and pull request templates are useful as well. I would suggest starting off with something simple, but definitely start with a code of conduct. Don't forget to go raise an issue on this project with some of these items. Overall, the project's looking really good. I like it that you've got a link so people can go and play with the demo. I still think it could do with a screenshot in the readme. Maybe even an animated GIF of someone visiting the site, putting in their username and then generating the result. Let me put some of these notes down. Let's move on to the next one. 
Oh wow, portfolio, open source project and GitHub profile. We've got like three here. These should have been three issues. Let's start off with the profile. Profile looks really good. I like it, it's catchy. I like the table, languages and frameworks that you use. This is really nice and links to your social media accounts. This is great. You belong to, wow, a lot of organizations. You do have a missing image here, which doesn't look quite right. So anyone watching, raise an issue on this repo. You can click it at the top, say there's a missing image. I think the profile looks really good. Again, if you put a picture of yourself, I think that would be a little bit nicer. I think it looks just a bit more professional. Do you have a picture of yourself on Twitter? You have the same picture, which is very good, but you actually have a proper picture on LinkedIn. I would recommend using the same picture on all of them. Missing image. Okay, let's look at the next open source project. One branch, that's fine, no tags. Maybe it's not ready for release yet. Last updated five days ago. Okay, it shows that it's active. The dot .idea folder shouldn't really be committed. This is the cache directory created by IntelliJ. Any of the other JetBrains products like IntelliJ, PHP Storm, or PyCharms, I think it is for Python. Is it PyCharms? JetBrains, Python, PyCharms it is. Okay, good. So what you'd have to do is actually remove this from Git so it doesn't track this and add it to the Git ignore so it no longer gets tracked. So we two steps in need doing for that. Output free MP4. I'm not sure about having binaries in the repo. Oh, it's because you have it down here, but is this not an animated GIF rather than MP4? It looks really awesome. I like having this animated GIF in the readme. It's really catchy. It looks great. You could talk about how to get started more in the project. I think you need a quick start. I think you also need any um, requirements that are needed. Useful. Quick start. You've got issues, got labels that looks really nice, really clean. No issues are closed yet. So maybe these are these are quite new and you've only just started using issues, which is fine. No pull requests. I suggest going through pull requests. I think it just looks so much more professional. It encourages other people to submit pull requests and it's good practice for you as well. No GitHub actions, no projects I'm guessing, no wiki. Let's have a look at the insights in the community tab. Code of conduct, highly recommend having one. There are templates that you can use. You don't have to write one from scratch. License and contributing file, definitely needed. Let me make a note of those. You've got a description. You have no link to a deployed version, which is fine because there might not be a deployed version and you have no releases, which is also fine. It still might be in beta and you haven't created any releases yet. Yeah, all in all, this is a really impressive tool. Really looking forward to seeing what happens next with it. Next project is Shark Quiz. Animated GIF in the readme always catches everyone's attention really good. It's a math game, okay? Let's see what else we see. Last commit was yesterday, okay, really active. We still know it's active. It's got a description, it's got topics, it's got a license, it's all written in Java. Project, I think that's NetBeans. You probably don't wanna commit that one. An issue that was created 21 days ago and nothing's closed. I think you need to use issues more. Don't forget they'll give you green squares. No pull requests, you have two that are closed. So one got accepted and one got closed just for the licensing. I would use these, definitely use these more. And if we look at the insights tab, it's always a really good place to go. Suggest code of conduct, contributing file, and you've got a license, which is good. Let's make some notes. I just noticed it's marked as a template project. I'm not sure if that's meant to be correct. If it's an active project, it's kind of the concrete project, just like an inheritance. Are you going to create more repos from this project? Template repos are really useful if you want to create more projects from that repo, but it looks like this is the concrete implementation. And I don't think you'll be extending this as it were. It'd be really good if there was a link to be able to play the game. I think it'd be brilliant to go have a play without having to clone it, install it and set it up. So I think, yes, having a link to the game would be awesome. It'd be really good for people just to go have a quick play if they want. So if you can get it hosted somewhere, I think that will help your project get noticed more, get used more, and then people will want to contribute because it's difficult for people to contribute if they can't have a play and think, oh, wow, I like this. But if it could do this, then it will be even more awesome. So if you can get it hosted somewhere, I think that would be great. I hope that was 
interesting to you all. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel below and hit the bell button so you get notified each time I post a video and go live. Remember, contribute to open source every day. See you in the next video. Uh, Andre, 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 Andre. On the, uh, one of your steps on any of the other, any of the other, what are they called? Jet brains.